Air inside of the family was in the pool early in the morning, swimming and showing off their great bodies. He had just picked up his cell phone, though, and couldn't wait to message Peter. He said he was free today and wanted him to go shopping with him. Meanwhile, Erin heads straight to the star house. Upon her return to the country, in her hand she also carried the accompanying gifts she had prepared for the members within her extended family, who knew that when she came back this time, she realized that a lot of things had changed. Erin, who saw this scene, was dying to unload on Dave. Still, she kicks Dave out sternly before settling the score with Amos. Erin is distraught when confronted with Amos cheating, who knows that Amos has had a lukewarm attitude since he was found out and is completely unrepentant. He even accused Aaron of some disgusting behavior. Amos just left the room after that, much to Aaron's dismay. That's why it ran to Dave. Amos' side wouldn't take it in. But on the side of Dave, who is digging in, Aaron is also at a disadvantage and has no fight in her. Dave also simply looked like he didn't care at all in the face of Aaron's oath of sovereignty. Not only does he prodigally state that what he wants he has to get outside, he also taunted Aaron with a few words about looking in the mirror more often and taking care of her basics. It pissed Aaron off to the point where her whole body was in a rage with no outlet. After Wei and Aaron meet, they look around the star house for Yo. It resulted in a scene where Yo was walking away with his hand on his lips. What he doesn't realize is that at this point, Yo's mind is all about the night when Wei was drunk. He kept getting closer to his scene. Thinking about it resulted in being called back by Wei, who kept calling his name. And Lion, who saw the scene not far away, said he would help him too. He told him to call on himself to contribute to help assist with anything. Also, Dave sighed after stimulating Aaron. He then walked into Amos' room again with a fur tray. Seeing that Amos wasn't going to say something, Dave immediately turned away. Who knows? Amos seems to think Dave is leaving town. Looks like he's going to continue to tangle with Amos after all. He was even thinking of making up his mind to be Amos's mistress. Sister Daisy's assistant is happy for Wei when she sees him get a new job. When she saw Yo and Lying coming with their stuff, that's when she left. But while they were getting ready for the shoot in front of the gate atrium, Sister Daisy's assistant was over here helping out. Yo also helps correct Wei's movements. However, it was at this point that Baron suddenly approached. Aaron then realizes that Peter is not in the extended family, and then asks the group about Peter's whereabouts. As it turned out, it was only when he asked that question that he found out from Lion's mouth, Peter surprises me by running to Gunn's apartment early in the morning to find him. Upon hearing that, Baron just looked sad and forlorn. He's been trying to reach Peter, but he's not getting through. His phone texts were also never answered. Baron uncautiously commiserated in his heart to where exactly he was inferior to Gunn. And May, a fresh female performer from Star House, is on her way out during a shoot. The administrator soon realized afterward that something was wrong and looked everywhere for someone who was nowhere to be found. When it was determined that she had disappeared, she immediately caught Sister Daisy to inform her of May's disappearance. Aaron had wanted to talk to Sister Daisy about something, but before she could even begin to talk, Amos was taken from Sister Daisy's room. He didn't want Aaron to make a big deal out of it. Aaron, of course, couldn't have rejected him outright, and put in a few harsh words, but when he's alone, he can't help but think back to all the good Amos used to do for him, after their passion in the car. The two decide to go to Sister Daisy to confess their relationship. May was caught by Sister Daisy and her assistant. As soon as she entered the front door of the extended family in the evening, Sister Daisy was all kinds of reprimanding to her. Baron and Peter were quickly followed by a fan meet and greet for both. On this day, apart from the two protagonists on stage, Sister Daisy also brought all her artists to show her support. It also made for a star-studded concert on stage. In particular, the affectionate interactions shown by the two on stage ignited the atmosphere to new heights. This fan meeting quickly came to a successful and smooth conclusion. How could I know that at this moment, the private student once again appeared in the background? And this time, Sister Daisy grabbed the bootlegger, who was about to leave after barging in backstage with the two. And that private student is none other than May, who skipped work for no reason. Though May was still trying to defend herself, but Sister Daisy already has proof of May's status as an illegitimate child in her hands. She said that Baron and Peter had all that stuff going on because of her. May looked at the photo Daisy was holding, and her thoughts went back a little bit. It turns out May didn't look like she does now before, because May was there at the time, when Baron and Peter were signing autographs and taking pictures of fans. She got pushed to the back by everyone because of the crowd and accidentally fell over. It was at this point that Peter reached out toward May to help her up. Peter and Baron also took a lot of pictures with her. This May may fall even deeper for the two, so she couldn't help but be a private fan. She had been following the pair around taking photos and then posting them online. A lot of the previous stuff was May's handiwork too. She even did a full facelift. 
in order to enter the House of Stars, and that's how she became a contracted artist of the House of Stars. At the same time, May has done a lot with that identity. This includes, but it's not limited to, giving out Baron and Peter's schedule. Then, she also makes malicious little gifts for Baron. When Baron can't find Peter, May gives him information about Peter's location. What she couldn't have imagined, however, was that she would be dismantled by Sister Daisy. Gunn and Peter were hanging out together at the mall outside when May also happened to see the scene. May dropped what she was holding straight away in her panic and instead took the knife out of her pocket. May was supposed to deal with Gunn when May threw the knife accidentally. Gunn subconsciously sidestepped to the side, who knew that the knife happened to accidentally injure his idol. Peter, when she gets home, May can't forgive herself for hurting Peter. She was remorseful, while the incessant cries of anger and cynicism of Gunn grew in her heart. For much of what May did, Sister Daisy had clearly understood. She also stated to May that she has met and dealt with many people like May. On the other hand, Gunn suddenly sees an injured man lying beside his car right after he dreams of hitting his head with his car. He was also awakened from his dream by the sight. He got up, though he kept trying to keep himself calm and go on with his previous life. But no matter what he did, he could recall what he and Peter had done in this room. And the scene where they're talking, he told Peter he wouldn't lie and cheat on someone he liked. It made Peter feel a little bad inside. He also remembered what had happened that day. When he and Peter had gone out to the mall, the two bought a bunch of stuff that day, discussing their trip afterward and what they were going to get. Gunn said he was going to the car to get something and Peter went along. After this incident, the two were called to the House of the Stars, though Peter's injury this time was only to the flesh, which was something to be thankful for, but given that the rumors about Gunn and Peter have gotten bigger and bigger, Sister Daisy then had to get Lily to intervene and forbid Peter from continuing to study under Gunn. When Peter was injured, Aaron naturally called Peter immediately to inquire about the injury, so he soon comes to Gunn's door in disguise to get a statement, asking why he let Peter get hurt. He also set the people who hurt Peter free. He thinks it's all Gunn's fault for insisting on staying with Peter. He even insisted on asking Gunn if he was harboring other thoughts about Peter. He also wants Gunn to take the initiative and talk to Sister Daisy about not letting Peter follow him. After Gunn had spoken Sister Daisy's orders, he again ostensibly waves back Baron's question with a house rule. Gunn then brought out a meal for two that he had cooked for himself. He invites Baron to sit down and eat with him. And Baron ate this one up and had to admit that even as a love interest, he's also not shy about giving Gunn who has a full complement of Kai points, high marks for cooking. After Baron left, Gunn's thoughts drifted back to the earlier scene where he and Peter spent time together. Before that, Peter would be very concerned about the eyes of onlookers whenever he was hanging out with him. Lily makes an appointment to meet Amos and gives him the job of auditioning for Constellation Men 2. Amos, however, felt no pain in his heart about it and even stated that he would not accept it. He also expressed his dissatisfaction by saying that what qualifies the leading man to take up this role he also feels that he has a high status in show business, so why would he want to play a role that isn't the male lead? Amos said what he wanted to say to Lily and left the place. While he was alone in his room drinking and digesting negative energy, Aaron approached him. Watching him drooled, Aaron couldn't help but say she wanted Amos to stop posing and moaning all the time, otherwise he would have to stay under someone else's shadow forever. Aaron's comment caused Amos to immediately get into a fight with Aaron. He accuses Theron of treating herself. In the end, he even gave up on continuing the conversation with his girlfriend and tried to force her to leave the room. He turned and ran to the side of Dave, who could comfort and encourage him. Seeing Amos turn down his invitation to a dinner date, Dave didn't care one bit. Instead, he asked if he was going to eat something else. Dave prepared a lot of Amos's favorite foods. There were also a lot of candles set up around him, and he made his feelings known to Amos in passing. Amos saw Dave's room full of pictures of himself. Amos couldn't help but speak from his heart to Dave as well. Seeing Amos in such denial, Dave instantly gives him a shot in the arm. He then proceeded to encourage him and confide in him. Gong also confessed that his mood at work has changed now. He felt as if he was forced to work now. Dave suspects that this may be a result of the pressure Aaron has put on Amos over time. The two only began to enjoy their dinner afterward. Amos also hung up on Hua's collar. Afterwards, Amos also decided to follow Dave. With his encouragement, to observe him at the theater where he worked, he also helped Dave take a picture with his support items. Amos looked at all the support items and asked Dave if they were from fans. Dave told it like it is too, and it wasn't long after Amos went to Dave's crew that he got a check-in call from Aaron, and thus his whereabouts were made known to Aaron, who asked him where he was now. It made Aaron angry and sad. She was even more pissed off after seeing Amos hang up on her and not pick up, but went ahead and went to work. On the other hand, Amos had planned to leave after hanging up. But because Dave couldn't get rid of his pouting, he stayed again, 
Aaron has been waiting for Amos to come home. Since she got back to the star house, she stated that since Amos was going to treat her, that way she had other ways of dealing with it. Actually, Aaron's journey to stardom hasn't been all that smooth. She was initially very unknown in the cast, although she still had a passion for acting at the time. That ah, she's only a third-tier character in the cast, and no matter how hard she tries, she's not taken seriously. That day when she was eating her box lunch at the theater, Lily, the administrator of Star House, reached out to her. She also handed her a business card to dig into her, hoping she could join Star House. That's what really kicked off her acting career and allowed her to start making a splash. And the fact that Aaron and Amos would get together stems from a peachy scandal she got into after she became popular. At that time, she was caught up in the negative press of being pregnant because of one. It was arguably Aaron's most difficult time. But it was also during that difficult time for Aaron that Amos chose to stand by her side. Amos even offered to ask her if she wanted to go out with him. That's what kept her going. And that's why Aaron's feelings for Amos aren't just because of contractual demands. Aaron felt resentful no matter how he thought about it. And Aaron's reaction to all of this was watched by Lily, who was on the sidelines after being caught at the scene of the crime by Daisy San last time. May is then forced by Sister Daisy's coercion to choose only to stop this perverted behavior. She becomes Sister Daisy's eyes and helps monitor both Baron and Peter. She also has to report back to her regularly about the work and private status of the two. This time May appeared before Sister Daisy in order to report this matter to her. She also spoke out about the changes she had observed in Peter. She also says that Peter and Baron have grown even more distant from each other. It's as if the only communication between the two of them seems to be work. Sister Daisy listened to May's words and didn't care what May felt in her heart. In her heart, she was satisfied with May's efficiency anyway. It wasn't long before Baron and Peter were offered jobs in the Outer Banks. This time, the job was a filming assignment. He also asked Lily if he could go home for a few days. Lily agreed to come down as well. After hearing that, Baron was happy. He said he had wanted to meet Peter's family for a long time and was thrilled with the whole thing. On this day, Wei comes to look for him at the place where Yo is filming. When he learns that Yo is getting ready to learn how to row a boat because of filming needs, Wei then tells Yo that he can't help and accompanies Yo to practice. Yo naturally had no way of turning down Wei. Wei then even said the word like. It also brought back instant memories for Yo of that day when Wei was drunk. After that Wei's words were completely lost on him and he had to ask Wei to say it again. During practice, Wei asked Yo about how he felt he took everything seriously. Yo then said it was because he didn't want to see those who had high hopes for him disappointed, especially the one he particularly valued. He hopes to stand by him better through his constant efforts. Wei, on the other hand, views that Yo is nothing special to him either. It could just be that he's overthinking himself. But then Yo says something that cheers Wei up again. It seemed to realize that the two were of the same mind, but the two didn't say so. While Yo was filming with the actress, Wei blundered into the camera and called Yo names because he couldn't figure out the situation on the set. This leaves Yo helpless. On the other hand, Baron and Peter's filming came to an end. Peter's acting skills were also recognized by the director. He was going to ask Lily what was going on. She also then blurted out that Peter and Gunn were studying after exchanging pleasantries with the director. Lily took the lead and left the place. Instead, her mind went back to her going to report to Sister Daisy. I, A, Aaron and Peter go to the Outer Banks to film a scene for work. She had been hesitant in her report, but had said that there was nothing wrong with the two. Then she left the room quickly, leaning against the door still disturbed. The image made Lily even more flustered, but chose to act as if nothing had happened. After the shoot, Peter and May chatted for a few moments afterward, just snousing and resting in the rest area, which resulted in a dream. In his dream, he dreamt that Gunn had come here to see him, and the other offered to take him home. Afterward, he and Gunn both chatted while looking at the scenery. Peter also told Gunn a lot about himself. The two were going to leave when Peter's eyes asked Gunn to help himself because it had gotten dust in them. As a result, the two of them held hands and got wet together, just like in a TV show. While dreaming, he also yells Gunn's name and then lets Baron, who comes to wake him up, hear him. Despite talking and chatting with Peter as usual, he couldn't help but feel jealousy in his heart, especially when he saw how Peter was avoiding Gunn. In the evening, Gunn sees a reality update post by Baron. It's full of images of Baron and Peter spending time together, and knowing that Baron showed up at Peter's house. Gunn then felt an unexplained anger well up inside him. Then on the next day when the crew was filming, he was there on the pretext of supporting the company's juniors. He rented food trucks to provide drinks for the crew. The move also sparked Baron's displeasure. Later, when Peter came over to order a drink, Gunn just realized what Baron meant by the drink he just ordered. The look he gave Baron was also very unfriendly. During Baron and Peter's shoot, Lily asks about Baron's purpose for being here. Naturally, 
Aaron doesn't tell the truth and leaves Lily speechless. Once the job was over, he and the director chatted for a few moments afterward. He then immediately asked the staff about where Peter was. Well, when he saw Peter alone looking at the scenery, and said that when Gunn left a long time ago, he then dropped his guard, another instantly soothing smile when Peter cares for him.